Hello everyone. In this tutorial, I will be showing you how to construct a cost volume profit chart on Excel. I will use the information in this scenario, which is about the Fun House. The Fun House is an indoor kids play center that provides one hour long play sessions at 80 Rand per kid. Each session includes a free beverage that costs eight rand and on a monthly basis between 1,500 and 3,000 children come to play at the fun house. The monthly fixed cost, which includes salaries and rental, is 40,000 rand. So on the chart, I will show the activity, which is the number of kids on the X axis or the horizontal axis, and I will show how variable costs, fixed costs, total costs, and revenue changes as a result of changes in activity. Costs and revenues will thus appear on the y-axis or the vertical axis. Before you can create a chart, you'll have to create a data table containing all the information that should be reflected on the chart. As I mentioned, it will be the activity. Or the number of kids. The fixed cost, the variable cost, total cost, and the revenue. Okay, I will start at zero for activity. And then I will go all the way up to 3000. Because in the scenario, it is stated that between 1500 and 3000 children come to play at the fun house on a monthly basis. So I'm going to go up to 3000 but I'm going to use increments of 200. Okay. So you can make use of 500 as increments or 1000, whichever one you prefer. Let me just show you again um, how to put in the formula because I want to use the formula in order to just copy it down all the way to 3,000, okay? So in order to do that, you type in equal to just below the zero, and then select the zero, and then add your increment, which in my case is 200. And then press enter on your keyboard. Okay, so now you can just drag the formula down. So in order to do that, select the 200, go to the bottom right corner. Okay, so you'll see that initially you will have a white cross and then as you reach the corner, it will turn into a solid black cross. So that is what you want. So once it's a solid black cross, that's when you can click on the mouse and then just drag the formula down. 
so I need the extra. There we go. Now I can fill up the rest of the table. Okay. Next is the fixed costs. So in the scenario, the monthly fixed costs is 40,000 rand. 40,000 rand. And it would be 40,000 irrespective of the level of activity. So it's going to stay 40,000 right down. So once again, you can just drag that 40,000 down. Or you can also just double click. Once it is a black cross, you can just double click. And it will copy the 40,000 down. So I want this fixed cost, the variable cost, total cost, as well as revenue to be in Rand. So I'm just going to change the number format over here. It's not over here, so we just have to go more accounting formats. Change the symbol. So here is where you can change it to any currency of your liking. So I'm using grand, so that is why I'm changing it to land. Yeah, I need to increase the space, otherwise you won't be able to see the 40,000. So over here, you can just double click between the C and the D on that line over there. Double click. Okay, next is the variable cost. The variable cost will be the eight rand per kid. Okay, so it's the beverage that will cost the company eight rand for every kid. So again, I'm going to make use of a formula because then I can just copy it down. So for the first one, say equal to, and then select on the number of kids. For the first one, it is zero then multiplied by eight. Then press enter. Go back to that block where your formula is in. Go to the bottom right corner and just double click. Okay, increase the spacing on top. So there we have the total variable cost for each level of activity. The total cost is the sum of the fixed cost and the variable cost. So select fixed cost, then type in a plus sign, then select the variable cost. Copy the formula down. And then the last one here is revenue. So again, I'm going to use a formula. So it would be activity or the number of kids multiplied by 80 rand per kid, because that is how much they charge. 80 multiplied by the number of kids will give us the total revenue. Go back in there and copy the formula down. That. So when the data table is complete, the graph can be created. So to do that, you have to select all the cost and revenue items. So select all of these items that will appear on the vertical axis or the y axis. 
then go to insert. And we want to insert a line graph. So here you can see these various graphs. We want a line graph. We click on the line graph. Okay, let me just drag it a bit to the side. Now click on the chart. Now, I want to change the horizontal axis because you can see here, it shows one to 16. What I want for it to show zero to 3000. Yes, okay, so I'm going to change that. Click on the chart, right click on the mouse. Then go to select data. We're going to edit the horizontal axis. Okay, we find with the vertical axis, so we're not going to change anything over here. So we're going to edit the horizontal axis. So click edit. Then select activity. Zero all the way to 3000. Then press OK. And press OK again. Okay, so there you have it. I can see that the values here at the bottom is a bit away from where I want the zero point to be. I want the zero point to be right there in the corner. So I'm going to move all of these values all of these values, I want to move a bit to the left so that the zero can fall right there in the corner. So you have to click on the horizontal axis, right click on the mouse, and then select Format Axis. Okay, scroll all the way down to tick marks. Okay. Actually, here yeah, by axis options. So we want the axis position to be on tick marks. So then select on tick marks and you'll see that this will move to the left. Okay, so let me just show that again. Click on the horizontal axis. Right click on the mouse. Format axis. Scroll down under access options and then select on tick marks. Then you can close it. If you like to format the vertical axis, so before I close it, let me just show you some options that you have for the vertical axis. So if you want to change this, maybe you want to add more values. Right? You click on there and then you can see that this automatically changes to give you information about the vertical axis. So I want to increase the number of values, right? So I'm going to change the maximum. I'm fine with the minimum because I don't have any negative values. Okay. So I'm fine with the minimum of zero. For maximum, if I look at revenue, so revenue will be my highest figures. So the highest one here is 240,000. So just to get rid of all of this extra space, I'm going to change the maximum to 240,000. And then, 
the increments, I'm going to change to 20,000. Okay, because now currently they're using 50,000. They have it here as major, 50,000, that's your increments. I want it to be 20,000. You can already see that it's changing over there. Okay, so there we have it. And then you can just close this. Now I'm just going to pull my graph in the corner here just to increase the size of it. Okay. So next, I will add some labels. So you click on the chart, then you click on the plus sign. Select access titles. So here you can see that the vertical access title is selected. So if it's selected, then you can start by typing in this label. So we label the vertical axis first and type it in over here by the formula bar. I will call this cost or revenue. And then move on to the horizontal axis title. Here I will type in activity. Okay. So if you don't have this option, if you don't have this plus sign right next to the chart, then just click on the chart, right click on the mouse, and then select format chart area. On top here, you'll have to click on chart options. Okay, and then we have access title. So here's horizontal category access title. You'll have to click on that to add a title to the horizontal axis. And then over here, vertical value axis title. You have to click on that in order to add the title to the vertical axis. Okay. There's that. You also give it a chart title. So just click on that word box. You can type it in here or you can type in the formula bar. Okay. So cost, volume, Let's call it a chart. The uh, fun house. Okay. So now we can indicate the break-even point and the loss area as well as the profit area. So the break-even point will be where the revenue curve, so this is the revenue curve or the revenue line. The break-even point is where the revenue line and the total cost line intersects, right? So right over here. This point over here. I'm going to use call out signs. So I'm going to insert a call out.
that's the break even point. this area over here. This would be the profit. Where the revenue curve is above the total cost curve. So that whole area there would be profit area. Then loss area. over here where the revenue line is below the total cost line. So that is the loss. Just move this up a bit. Okay, so we can also shade the profit and loss area to make it stand out. To do that, we have to add to the data table a base and the calculation of profit or loss. The base is what will be deducted from revenue in order to get to profit or loss, but the base we'll just remove afterwards. Okay, so let me just move this to the side. So I'm going to add a base. And like I said, the base is what must be subtracted from revenue in order to get your profit or loss. So in effect, the base is your total cost. So you can just say equal to and then click on total cost. Copy it down. Okay, and then we have the profit or loss. And this would be equal to revenue minus the total cost or the base. Okay, and then just copy the formula down. So next, we'll have to add these two columns to the chart. Okay, so you click on the chart. Once you do that, you'll see that all of the information that's included on the existing chart will be highlighted. So to include the columns, these two columns, we just going to drag this blue area across. Okay. So go to the bottom right. Again, you have to wait for the cursor to change. Okay, so once you see that, the two arrows on both sides, and you just drag it across so that it includes the last two columns. So you'll see that the chart will automatically be updated. Don't, don't worry about that now. We're just going to use this to shade the area you'll see now. And then we will delete some of the information. Okay, so next, click on the chart. It's already we're already on the chart. So we click on the chart and then right click on the mouse. And then select chart, change chart, change chart type. On the left here, 
select combo. And then over here, we need to make sure that all categories are lines. So fixed cost, we want it to be a line. Select line. Variable cost must be a line. Total cost must be a line. Revenue must be a line. So all categories except for the base and the profit or loss. For this we want to be stacked areas. Okay. Profit or loss, stacked area. Okay, so everything must be aligned set for the base and profit or loss. Those two must be stacked areas. Then click OK. And next, click on the area that represents the base. So this is the base of here, the blue. Right click on the mouse. Go to format data series. Go up here to fill and line, select on that. And then select no fill. Okay, close that. Now you can see that we no longer have the base fold, but we have the profit area as well as the loss area shaded. We can remove the base now from the legend over here. Click on the legend and then click on base again, and then just press delete. Okay, you can leave it like this, or we can also change the colors. So we can make the profit area and the loss area two different colors. Let me just fix the break even point because this also helps me to see the point clearer. Right. Okay, so let's make it two different colors. So you do so by clicking on the area that you want to change. Right click on the mouse. Select format data series. Once again, go to the full options. We're going to use the gradient full option. Okay, make sure that this is linear. So I've already set this. I'm just going to change the settings um, just to show you how I get to the color red and blue on my graph. Okay, so first of all, we might end, or you might have a scenario where there's more than, than two gradient stops. Okay, so you might have two or three or four gradient stops. So the first thing that, that you need to do is make sure that you only have two gradient stops. So you click on the stops, whichever ones, and then just remove them over here. So remove gradient stop. Okay, so if you've got four, you need to remove two. So okay, remove the gradient stops so that you are left with two. Okay. Also make sure that this is on linear. Okay, so the type must be linear. Then you change your color. So 
so whatever color you prefer. So I've got red and I've got blue. So you click on the stop and then over here you select your color. Red. Again, you click on the stop and then you select your color. So you can make it green. So then what you have to do next is to move your stops around towards each other and then just follow how it changes on the graph over here. Okay. So you see this won't do. You need to move this around so that only your loss area is red in my case and only the profit area is blue. We need to move close to each other. Okay. There we go. Okay, so until you're satisfied with having the correct colors within the correct area. So now we have blue for profit area and we've got red for the loss area. And then once you're done, you can just close this. And then you don't have to, but I'm also just going to change the call out so that it matches the blue area over here for profit and for loss. I will just make the call out red. Let me just change this. Click on the call out, go to format, shape full. I'm going to change it to the same blue that I have for the area. Box. Same, go to format, shape full, and change it to red. And there you have it. So we've got all of the lines. We've got the variable cost line here at the bottom. We've got the fixed cost line, which is straight horizontal line over here. We have the total cost line, which will be parallel with the variable cost line, but slightly above the fixed cost line. And then we have the revenue line going up there. We have the break even point. This is where your revenue line and the total cost line intersects. Got the profit area and we have the loss area.